quick. Graph y equals the sine of the quantity 2x minus pi over 3 by hand. We're going to illustrate it three different ways. And this is part of the family of functions series. You will need paper and a straight edge, or you can download this PDF and print it. Press pause as needed any time during this video. The first way is with what we call the sine dance. And as we did with other parent functions, we need to factor out the 2 in the argument. So 2x minus pi over 3 could be rewritten as 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 6. These are equivalent expressions. The advantage to the right side is that the minus pi over 6 means that's a phase shift right and the times 2 means the period is divided by 2. Pause is needed. So rewriting it in this form, we recall the graph of the sine function and the five key points of interest. These key points and all points are affected by the parameters in the equation, and there are two of them. As noted previously, what we call k is equal to 2, and that affects the period inversely. That is, the period is 2 pi times the reciprocal of k, which in this case would be 2 pi times 1 half, which is pi. Pause is needed. So the period is pi. The other parameter, the minus pi over 6, shifts each point to the right pi over 6 units, a phase shift, pi over 6 to the right. We need to change the units on the x-axis so that we can plot this more easily. We suggest marking off every pi over 6 and using this domain, negative 4 thirds pi to positive 4 thirds pi. And that's what we did right here. Pause is needed. The initial point on the sine function is normally at the origin. It will be shifted to the right pi over 6, 0. The y coordinates are not affected by these parameters, so we'll start at pi over 6, 0. The end of a period is normally at 2 pi away to the right of the initial point, one period. But the period for our graph is pi units, so we're going to have to start here and go pi to the right. So that'll be at pi over 6 plus pi. Think of pi as 6 pi over 6. 1 and 6 makes 7 pi over 6. So at 7 pi over 6, 0 is a point of inflection. Halfway between these two points, beginning and end, is another point of inflection. And this is going to be at 2 pi over 3, 0. You can see that halfway between there. Halfway between these two first points of inflection is a maximum. On our graph, it's going to occur halfway between these two, which is in between pi over 3 and pi over 2, halfway between. The coordinates of that point are going to be 5 pi over 12 comma 1, and you might want to know why or how did I get that. Well, think of each pi over 6 as 2 twelfths pi, so this would be 2 twelfths, 4 twelfths, this would be 6 twelfths, and halfway between would be 5 twelfths. Halfway between these two points of inflection is a minimum. So halfway between these two would be right here. And the point will have coordinates 11 pi over 12, comma negative 1. Press pause as needed. Connect the points as a sine wave. Frown or concave down, smile, concave up. This is one period of a sine wave. We're going to duplicate it in the negative direction to the left. And so starting at this point of inflection, we go back a period, which is pi. From this max, we go back a period, which is pi. From the second point of inflection and from the minimum. And now we can connect the points again as a sine wave. Compared to the parent function, we can see that from blue to green, it is shifted to the right 
five or six. And also in one period of the sine function, we were able to get two complete periods of this function. So two periods in the same width as the sine function. And that two has everything to do with that coefficient right there. Pause is needed. Second way is using a table. So we'll start with these traditional values on the x on the axes. Complete the table. Pause is needed. And you should just know these. We need to create a second table. And we know that we have to, this times 2 is inside the parentheses, and that multiplies each x value by its reciprocal, 1 half. The minus pi over 6 inside the parentheses shifts each point to the right, pi over 6, which means we have to add pi over 6 to each x value to get it to the right. Pause is needed. Now, by the order of operations, we need to do the multiplication first, and then we do the addition second. So we're going to multiply x values by a half, then add pi over 6. So starting with 0 times a half plus pi over 6, we're going to show the calculations over here. If you need to pause to see the arithmetic, do so. So x is pi over 6, and y values are unchanged. So it's at zero. So this is the initial point of our first period. Pi over two times a half plus pi over six. These are the calculations. We need to get a common denominator. Turns out that that's five pi over 12. The y coordinates remains unchanged again. So write five pi over 12 up one. Pi times a half plus pi over six. Again, here are the calculations. Again, we used um, twelfths. So I, I guess I could have used sixths as well uh, for the common denominator. But it's over 2 pi over 3 and 0. 3 pi over 2 times a half plus pi over 6. Common denominator of 12. 11 pi over 12, comma negative 1. And 2 pi times a half plus pi over 6, pi plus a sixth is 7 sixths pi, comma 0. Pause is needed. Connect the points as a sine wave. And we can plot another one to the left, another wave to the left going back a period of pi from each point. And then connect another sine wave. And it just kind of keeps waving along there. Now the third way uses algebra and recognizing patterns of the wave. So recall that we can multiply that 2 throughout and go back how the problem was originally done. We're going to use the non-factored form here. They are equivalent forms. Again, recall the graph of the sine function and the five points of interest. The initial point has an x value of 0. To find out what x value is the initial point for our graph, we're going to take the argument and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. We want to know when this is 0. So 2x minus pi over 3, we set that equal to 0. Several ways to solve it. I prefer to multiply both sides by 3 to clear out any fractions. And then I prefer to add pi to both sides and divide both sides by 6. So my initial x value is at pi over 6, comma 0, and I'll plot that right here. So this point maps to this one. 
The final point has an x value of 2 pi. Again, to find the x value that gets that final point for our graph, I'm going to set this argument, this expression right here, equal to that 2 pi and solve for x. Again, I prefer to multiply both sides by, oops, I'm going to have you do that, sorry. Pause is needed, resume when you're ready. You give this a shot. So I multiplied both sides by 3 to clear out any fractions. Added pi to both sides and divide both sides by 6. So my ending point is going to be at 7 pi over 6. And you can see that this point maps to this point right here. Pause is needed. So we have two points plotted. We now need to get the other three. We need to just fit them in between here. So halfway between these two points right here is another point of inflection. So I need to find the halfway point between those two points. And it turns out it's at 2 pi over 3, 0. And I also calculated the distance. They're both 3 pi over 6 apart to show that they're, this is equidistant from those two. Pause is needed. So we have three points plotted. We now have to fit the other two. This one is halfway between these two first red points, these points of inflection. It's a max. So I'm going to go halfway between these two points and get our maximum right there. Its coordinates are 5 pi over 12 comma 1. So this point here maps to 5 pi over 12, 1. And we've got four points. Again, the last one is a minimum between these two points of inflection. So I need to go halfway between these two points and plot a minimum point, which turns out to be at 11 pi over 12, comma, negative 1. So I used algebra and the patterns of the curve to do this one. Pause is needed. And so here's more than two periods of this curve right here. Just curious, we're curious, which was your favorite way to graph this of the three ways? Now you try one. Graph y equals the sine of the quantity 1 third x plus pi over 6. Use either method or all three for the practice. Give you a hint, you will need to change the units. Pause is needed. Resume when you're ready. So this is what the graph looks like here in green. Uh, you can see that the period is uh, 2 pi divided by 1 third, which is 6 pi. And you can see that it goes through its whole sine curve, stretched out to 6 pi. When I factored out the 1 third, the phase shift is left pi over 2. So you can see instead of being at the origin, it's back pi over 2. Pause if you need to do so. This is the end of the video.